Welcome back to the WWF World Welding Federation. It's Weldomania, isn't it, John? Woo wee, I can't wait. It's getting crazy out there. We've got a lineup from all over the world. All over, all sizes, all kinds of stuff out there. We've got the rods that are the fast ones, the slickest, the quickest, the hardest, the strongest. Let's take a look at our lineup. First up, we have the 6011, John. One it's of my favorites. It's great for that rusty metal for deep penetrating stuff. Oh, fast freeze, nothing faster. And we have the 308L-16, John. Wow, look at this one here. Oh, one of my personal favorites, chrome, nickel. You can't get better than that, folks. I don't know, John. Unlike its 15 series, this one isn't an all-position rod. It could hinder it in today's competition. Could be. This next rod's one of my favorites, one of the quickest in the whole world welding federation, the 7014. Yeah, John, it's a great one. It runs on all the polarities, DCE and DCEP and AC, and it's a fill freeze. It's a good contender. Oh, absolutely. This next contender I'm not super familiar with, 9018. You've got to know the history of the WWF, John. The 9018's been around for quite some time, but other processes have come in and kind of taken the job. But it's still a great contender for heavy structural bridges, vessels, and heavy pressure piping. I'm excited. I'm excited to see how it contends. All right, this next one is a fan favorite, the 6013. It's great for underdogs, John, and it's really good, but don't get it confused with the 6011. It's good friend, where it's a deeper penetrating rod with the 6013. It's very shallow. It's a bit shallow. It is a shallow rod. And here he is, folks, the 6010, the fan favorite, the all-time contender, deep penetrating, all positions. You can't beat it. Every time I see it, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. But it's not great for those thinner metals, and that's what we got to take into consideration. Very true. This next rod is one of our exotic contenders. That's 309. 309L-16. It's great. It's like ketchup. You can put that stuff on anything. Everything. It's going to stick. It's going to hold 75,000 tensile strength minimum. It's a great oh. rod, great contender. I'm excited to see him put in work today. And if you do it right, it's a beautiful looking rod. Oh man, the 7018, that's our Woo! next contender, the bad boy. Baddest of He's all. been living in that 6010 shadow for quite some time, and he really wants it this year. Oh, you get him wet, though. You're going to see the bad side of 7018. Oh, I tell you what. Oh. Uh, up next, we got, who? Uh, who is this, John? Can you get a, get a call in to see who this is? Is this right? This is right. Oh, we've this got 1300. We're not really sure who this contender is. It's some sort of an aluminum stick rod. It's, it seems to be good for low temperature production and maintenance, so we'll see. How he contends today, we have no earthly idea how this is going to turn out. It's pretty hard to impress me, but I have big hopes for this rod. This so next rod, 7024, it is coming in under the normal size for its weight class at 330 seconds. Yeah, typically it's a high deposition rate rod. It's going to be putting down a lot of iron, and this 330 second size just might not cut it this year. Mm. We've got another new one this year, John. We've got 11018 stepping in. If you thought 7018 or 9018 was intimidating, just look at this guy. Big boy. Big boy. <laughs> when will they stop? Oh, right now we've got them coming in, John. The action's about to start. We've got to get ringside with Metallurgy Mike and Stinger. Let's go! Welcome to Weldon Mania 2024. Today we're going to see which electrode has the gall, which electrode has the gumption to beat up my buddy Stinger here. He's a tough one, so we're going to see which electrode is the toughest in the room to weld with. When it comes to SMAW, you've got to learn how to control your arc length, your travel speed, your welding angle. These things all vary depending on which electrode you're running. Each one of these electrodes have different types of alloys and sprinkles inside that flux that makes them run very differently. So we're going to see how hard these all are as Stinger here sets up to weld. This is how it's going to work today. We're going to put two rods head to head and Stinger here is going to weld with both of them. He's going to decide on which rod was the most difficult to weld with. First up, we've got the 6011. He seems to have had a pretty easy arc strike, really easy to light up. Seems to have good stable control over it. Not hearing a whole lot of spattering, not a whole lot of sputtering. Things sound to be going good. It's likely he's going to be doing a little bit of an, a, a cold or hot whip motion, moving back and forth with this fast freeze electrode. Rod was easy to restart, easy to light right back up, even after stopping. So far, the 6011 just seems to be a pretty smooth welding rod, brother. Oh, he's got a little bit of a hiccup. Can he recover? Right around 74 amps for this 330 electrode, the 6011 is wrapping up. Very similar F numbers, the 6010 is up next. 
compared to the 6011. It's got the similar characteristics. The biggest difference is welding that and changing it on its polarity. That 6011 is more of an alternating current type rod where this is a DC positive monster. You'll see very similar welding techniques with this 6010 as you do the 6011. Whip, pause, whip, pause. That's all it takes. Oh, right up, real easy. The 6010 is quite comparable to the 6011. Look at that mini arc go. We're wrapping up the uh, 6010 electrode now, burning them down to the stingers. Well, which one is it, Stinger? Which one of these electrodes took the cake and made it harder to weld today? You heard it here, 6010 moves on. Next two contenders we have are the Stainless Steel Brothers. They're very comparable, the 308 and 309L-16 rods. 100 amps to get this rod running and gunning. The strike of the arc seemed to be fairly simple. We're just gonna be boogieing along. The puddle seems a lot different than that of other welds. You're gonna have to maintain a fairly close arc length, but without smothering this electrode. Even 100 amps, this puddle seems to be a bit sluggish. Not a very erratic arc with the 308 series, 309 series rods. Real steady, real stable. Oh, right on up. That mini arc rogue is a champ. Not to mention that rod just seems to be easy going for Stinger here. Here's one of my personal favorite contenders, the jack of all trades, the 309L. You can put this shit on anything. Very comparable to the 308, however, this rod is designed for welding dissimilar metals like steel to stainless steel. The art characteristics of this one seem to be very comparable to the 308L-16. All right, back up, no problems. Stinger seems to be handling himself just fine. These rods aren't putting any work on him. Carbon steel, stainless steel, doesn't matter. Stinger can handle it. All right, Stinger, which one of these stainless steel contenders took the cake and was the hardest weld to make? That's right, the 308L electrode. The 7014 and the 7024, the next two rods, head to head. Very interesting battle here. We've got the 7014 and the 7024 both having a bunch of iron powder in them. However, the 7024 is just good for only flat and horizontal, whereas the 7014 thrives in all positions. 7014 restart. Oh, right back up. With the 7014, you are going to want to have a bit of a spray arc to it. You want a little bit more deposition rate, a little bit more voltage to come up with a higher arc length than you would say a 7018. Swapping those leads over, getting that polarity to DC, and the 7024 is up next. Lots of iron powder in this rod, high deposition rates, but I'm curious to see with that 332 size 7024 if it can have the same deposition rate as a 18 7014. Let's see the restart. Right back up! These 7024s are known for their weldability. Just a straight drag with this rod. Keeping it nice and steady, you should be able to get a nice peeler with these rods. What'd you think, Stinger? 7014, 7024. That 24 for real? It's moving on. The 6013 is up next and it's a fan favorite. It's a weldability is unlike any other rod. Should be just a cakewalk for my man Stinger here. You wanna keep a bit of a longer arc length. You wanna treat this rod a lot like you would a 6011. 75 amps for this electrode and it's just burning in nicely. This rod we all know is nice and easy to weld with. I'm interested to see the restart. Every time it restarts nice and smooth. We'll see if this contender, the 1300, is anything like the 6013. The next contender really threw us a curveball. We had to get an extra piece of material because it's aluminum. 
Oh, wow, this arc strike on this one was really sporadic. It was sputtery, it was stuttery. Can he hold it? What is the arc length on this madman? We have no idea. It seems to just fizzle and burn away. Oh, man, it's popping out of control. What are the colors, the sparks? Let's try the restart. Oh, it won't even light back up. Come on. You can do it, stay oh, right back up, here we go. Stinger's got it, can he handle himself? He's having a really rough time with this 1300. Gee whiz, folks, who would've known this guy come out of nowhere? I don't think we have to get Stinger's answer on it. He already has the look of defeat in his eyes. That 1300 is taking the cake. It's a free for all now, folks. We're going against the 70, the 90, the 110, 18 to see which one has the goal. In my experience, brother, these are really easy electrodes to run. Keep it slow, keep it tight, and you'll be able to perform the best weld possible every time. Let's see the restart. Right back up with the 7018, easy peasy. Keep it slow, keep it steady. Maintain those arc links, those angles, and this rod will come out a peeler every time. That 70's finished off. Now we're on to the 90. Struck up like a charm. Seemed a bit aggressive on the start. Seems to be having a harder time with this 9018 electrode. There's some special alloys in this rod compared to its 7018, brethren. From the look and sounds of things, it might be just a tad cold for Stinger here. He seems to be fighting this 9018. A bit more of a sporadic arc. Let's see the restart. We had to double tap it, but he's back in. That 9018 really kind of gave him the fumble and the stumbles. Let's see if Stinger has any hard times with this 110-18. Seems he's trying a little bit of motion this time, brother. He's doing everything in his power to move this stuff around. Stinger, the molten metal manipulator. Let's try the restart. Easy. It seems to us that the results are very conclusive. We don't even have to put these other rods back head to head tournament style. We know the clear winner of this. Who is it, Sting? There it is, the 1300. It's the hardest one in the room to weld with. Nobody wants to weld with this thing. Wow, gee whiz, John, what an upset. Unbelievable. Didn't see that, that came out of left field. It really did. Well, if you'd like to see a lot of great more content, please like, follow, and subscribe to the Well.com channel, and check us out inside the Weld app. Absolutely. If you like other stick welding content, check out this video right here. We'll see you guys next year. year.